Welcome back, you awesome students of history. You made your way back to my channel, Mr. Land's Flipped U.S. History Class, video number 10. The title on the screen, Causes of the American Revolution, part one. Welcome to a new era of history called the American Revolution Era, kids. So diving into my video series here, we're going to do the same things that we always do, kids. When you're watching, make sure that you're listening well. You got to listen to my narration and my stories. If you're not listening, then you're not getting all the details. And when you're listening, you got to process. So if you're missing information, pause and rewind so that you can get the facts that you need. Because that's really important when your brain is trying to process. You're trying to do more than one thing listen, read, write, and try to gather information. And with that being said, if you're in my class, you can follow that No cheat. Go in order with those questions and you're gonna get all of the answers. Fireworks, baby. So well, let's start with our vocabulary as we do every time. Definitions are on the right. We're gonna start with the pronunciation of the words. Here they are, I'll pronounce them. You can pause and, re and rewind as needed. Here we go. Number one, revolt. Number two, Parliament, that's a really big one. We're gonna use number three, tyranny, it's highlighted, it's a big word. Number four, smuggling. Number five, duty. Number six, boycott. And number seven, quarter. Get those, get those vocab now. You unpause my face, I'm unfrozen. Big questions before we dive into the new era of the revolution. What were the reasons that colonists in the 13 colonies decided to revolt, to rise up against their mother country, England. How did America actually become America? And in this particular video, can you at the end describe the events that led to this revolution in this part one? I'm going to make sure that you learn those. So let's get into it. Now, when we dive into the revolution, we have two sides fighting against each other. So we're going to start with the colonials. Those are the colonists. They are going to rise up and revolt. So when we think of the colonists, we think of George Washington, we think of Thomas Jefferson, we think of that beautiful Betsy Ross flag, right? And so I'm going to show that flag right now. And they're going to be rising up against Mother England. Mother England is controlled by King George III. He's going to be a really important figure. Now, his army is called the British Army, of course. They are called shorthand redcoats. They are called redcoats for their red coats. Now, Parliament is a new figure in this story. Parliament is going to be very massively influential in this, in this video today. Now, who is Parliament? Parliament is this building, but it's not just a building. It is the main governing group. It is the legislature, those group of representatives that go work at Parliament. They are a group of men who make the laws. So this is where the governing body of England resides. Now, they are making the laws in this story that I'm about to tell you. So the road to revolution, we're going. Let's go. I'm running. I'm running. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. So let's start with a little review. Do you remember from my video series on video one of the colonies exploration that England made their wealth through some a system called mercantilism? So just for a quick review, Mother England would take their wealth by making their colonies or their workers work for them. Now, what would they do? Well, Mother England would make their colonies send raw materials over to England. And with those raw materials, Mother, and I say that in quotes, Mother would make or manufacture a good. And of course, they would take that good and they would sell it at a higher profit. Now, this made the colonists begin to feel like they were getting taken advantage of because they weren't sharing in the profits with mother and mother was taking their raw materials from them that they were using to make their own lives with. So mother was sort of taking advantage of the workers or the colonies this way. Now, where does this lead to? This is a cause. This is making the colonists feel very unloved by mother. And so this is gonna open the door to the first law. The first law that England is going to pass, do you see the little crown there at the top? You see the little crown? That's England, right? That's King George. The first law is called the Navigation Acts of 1763. Now, as you guessed, England passes this law against the colonies. So what happens here? little review from my last video series on number, on number nine. After the colonies in Great Britain had engaged in a war with France, this called the French and Indian War. 
This war created a huge problem that England had. So what was this problem? Take a look. Can you guess? Wars always create massive debt. England was going broke because they had spent so much money fighting France in the French and Indian War. Now, King George was not pleased about this outcome. So King George and Parliament, they come up with a plan. What is their plan? They decide to pass a law that will require the colonists to trade goods from their colony only with Mother England. So other countries' trade was strictly prohibited. As a matter of fact, it was very limited. And because it was very limited, the colonists couldn't trade. They couldn't make what? They couldn't make money. So without this money, there was no trading done outside of Mother and the colonies. Not only that, Mother was going to charge them a tax every time there was a good coming into the colony. This made the colonists feel what? What do you think they felt like? I'm going to use that little patriot hat that you see there, that symbol. And it's going to show you the colonists and their faces and their emoji. Now, the colonists were kind of displeased, of course, because they couldn't make money. They were getting taxed and all of their goods were getting sent and traded with England. So what did the colonists do? Look at that blue box. They started to smuggle, meaning they were sneaking in stuff into the colonies without paying the taxes because they wanted to keep their money. Now, Mother England caught wind of this. And you know this is true, right? Because you've tried to smuggle stuff into the house before. You know you have, right? So England catches wind of this. There's one item that's getting smuggled a lot. Do you see the title right there? The Sugar Act. So England decides to pass a law in 1764. The King and Parliament pass a law requiring taxes on all sugar that is being brought into the colonies. So again, why is the king charging the colonists taxes? Because he wants to make up that debt money from the war. That, that debt money is costing him and he needs that money to pay it back because that England is seriously in trouble, financial trouble right now. So that sugar is one of those items that's getting seriously smuggled. Take a look at the colonists right there, right? They're like, wait, what? You're going you're, you're gonna to charge me taxes on sugar? Yeah, because sugar was a highly valuable item in the colonies. So the taxation was a direct result of all the freaking smuggling that the black market colonists were doing by bringing in that sugar. So the king, he got wind of the sneakiness of the colonists, and he's like, boom, I'm shutting you down. We're going to shut this smuggling down and we're going to charge you taxes. So the colonists take this as a reaction. What do they, what, how do you think they take it? Well, they don't take it well, right? So they begin to feel that their civil liberties are being violated. A civil liberty is a freedom. Like we all have freedoms in our world. They took it like the king was taking away their own freedoms with these taxes. Now the chants begin. This is where things start to really build up for the colonists. They start chanting the rally cry of the revolution. Look at the blue box right there. What does it say? No taxation without representation. Guys, this is humongous. This is the rallying the cry, the slogan for these colonists. Now, what does this statement mean? The meaning of no taxation without representation. It comes from their anger to having to follow laws that are being passed in England. Now, they did not have any say or opinion in English government since the colonists lived 3,000 miles away in the colonies. So those colonists wanted to be heard, but who did they want to hear them? Take a look at that picture. They wanted parliament to listen to them, and parliament was not because they had no representation. They had no people in that parliament to speak for them. Now, these colonists took this as a very bad way. So colonists believed that it was tyranny. Look at that word right there. Cruel rule for the British parliament and the king to be making them follow laws that they had no say in. They felt that this was cruel and unjust and it was unfair for them to follow. This is going to become a humongous rallying point for the colonists for in their fight to rise up against England, Mother England. So the king and parliament come back in the same year of 1764. Look at the title right there, The Stamp Act. Now, a lot of you are going to guess stamps, right? Not really. The king and parliament are about to pass another tax law 
that requires colonists to obtain an official stamp on all paper products, proving that they have paid for paper. Paper, kids. Yes, paper was being taxed. Why? Because the king wanted to pay for that war debt. Remember the war debt. That's huge. So these paper products had to get a stamp. Anything that was made of paper had to be paid a tax, and it had to be stamped. That included documents, newspapers, pamphlets that you would have for reading, even playing cards or dice that were made of paper for fun were taxed. So the colonists are going to react. How do you think they're going to take it? You can probably guess, right? The colonists are not going to be happy about getting taxed on paper. So they're going to fight back. What do I mean, mean by fight? They're not going to get violent. No, but they're going to do something sneaky. They're going to boycott. Look at that highlighted section. They're going to boycott. What does it mean to boycott? Well, by boycotting, it is a type of protest. So in other words, the colonists are going to agree to not buy paper. Why? So that they don't have to pay the tax. And by not buying paper, they don't pay the tax. The king won't get their money. This actually works, kids, because the king will eventually repeal or get rid of this tax. So what next? The Sons of Liberty show up. The Sons of Liberty are this really influential group. Who were they? They were semi-secretive. They were very patriotic. But they also had a goal to push colonists to confrontation. There's the famous Sam Adams and the famous John Hancock, two of the most famous Sons of Liberty of all time. Now, their ways of getting their message across was through civil disobedience. They would act out threats, protests, and even sometimes violence against England. Now, their methods of producing results could sometimes include harassment, Threats, like I said, they destroyed businesses even that were loyal to England, and they even caused physical harm and death to even tax collectors, tax collectors, excuse me. So these Sons of Liberty, while very patriotic, could be very controversial. We're going to look at them in class. Now, another law that comes out of this whole causes of revolution is the Quartering Act in 1765. Now, this one sounds like quarter, and you're probably thinking money, but it's not money. It's something far worse. The king and parliament pass a law that threatens the colonists in their homes by requiring all citizens to give British soldiers, look at that, they can sleep inside the homes if the soldiers demanded it. So if a soldier knocked on your door, by law, you had to quarter them. What does that mean? Quarter means to allow someone in your home. Look at that highlighted section. Quarter. Quarter in this case doesn't mean money, not a tax. The king felt that since he sent his soldiers to the colonies to help them defeat France in the French and Indian War, then the colonists should pay for those soldiers. Now, how do you think the colonists are going to take soldiers in the house? How would you take those, those soldiers in your house? You would be livid, outraged. They were... Colonists were super outraged at this, and this was beginning to really crack the colonists' faith in England because the king was pushing them so hard in a direction where their anger was going to start to boil out and over. Now, the last law that we're going to look at today in 1767 is the Townshend Acts. Now, the Townshend Acts was created by a man whose name was Townshend, but the king George and Parliament agreed to pass this final tax law that was going to target specific goods that they felt the colonists could not make on their own in the colonies, so they would have to buy it from English merchants. Again, it's all about making the money for that war debt, right? So what were these goods? There were five items, paper, glass, lead, paint, and tea. Those five items were very popular. So how do the colonists take a tax? Well, you can guess, right? They don't take it well. Because remember, kids, they have spent years asking the king to give them representation in parliament. Have they gotten it? No, they have not. So the king and parliament have ignored the colonists' cries for that representation. And because they don't, they refuse to pay the taxes, and they're growing more angry. Eventually, the colonists will boycott these items, too, and they won't want to pay for it because they don't want to spend the money and give the king their tax money. 
So it's going to just come. Notice how it's just kind of like a fight. It's just kind of taking turns, just punch and punch and taking turns right there. The king, parliament, Congress, excuse me, king, parliament, and the colonists. They're just kind of going back and forth. So what next, everybody? It ain't over. It ain't over. The The colonists have just begun their fight. So if you want to know what happens next, you got to stay tuned for that that next video. And it's really going to boom, blow up. Oh, yeah. So lastly, can you name the acts that we learned, the laws that Parliament passed to get the colonists to pay for those that war debt and those taxes? Why were so many of these laws being passed in the colonies in the first place? Can you answer that question? If you want to have some advanced knowledge, how were the colonists reacting? as the as the the laws were being passed how was that that anger slowly growing and how did they show their displeasure with the king because they did it in different ways right they showed it and then we can you can rewind and go through that kids i want to say thank you for joining mr land here on my flip classroom i'm going to catch you on youtubes you guys be good and i'll see you soon in class all right